All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome anybody who's new. Uh, my name is Dirk Fry. I am the senior market strategist here at Forex Traders Daily. Um, as usual, these sessions are totally open, really, guys. Um, so feel free to ask any questions anytime, anything market related. Um, you know, the most important subject is always the same one. Anybody know what the most important subject is? It's definitely not price action. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Risk management, money management. Those are the only things that really matter. The rest of that conversation is, a, frankly, a waste of time. But uh, risk management is the difference between the winning and the losing. Nothing else. So um, anyway, but we can talk about anything. I'll gladly talk about price action if that's, what we, if that's the only questions we get. But uh, I'm just saying the most important questions are always the risk management ones. Always. Always, always, always. So what do you guys want to look at? Don't be shy. I can go through my newsletter actually today too since I've got that going until we get some questions going at least. Um, frankly, if you're a regular reader of my newsletter, this week's comments are largely the same as last week's. Um, we haven't we haven't yet really seen – last week was almost like it didn't happen. Um, so we, uh, we're basically looking at the same thing. So let me just go through this real quick and then we can move on. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Dollar seems to be unable to make a move in either direction the last few weeks. The ranges have uh, the ranges have given us many great trading opportunities, but lacking of actual direction. The one exception, obviously, I think, is the Canadian, but pretty much everything else has maintained its range. Uh, we continue to want to own dollars at these levels, but caution is still the word of the week, as we could see a few head fakes to the downside in dollars before turning. Uh, we're still up at about 800 points or so for the month, um, and looking to finish this month strong. Most of the comments below, like I said already, are the same as last week since we've had little to no movement. Um, so the euro remains short um, with an average price in the 141s to 142s for most people. Uh, still targeting a move back below the 140s, well into the mid, I think, 130s by the time it's all said and done. But really, like I said here, end of summer is probably the target. Um, cable, this pair has been really volatile and a lot of fun to trade back and forth. Now that we're back up near 165, obviously risk is lower to the uh, – there's more risk to the downside than there is to the upside. Therefore, I want to be short. Um, so uh, let's see. So let's see. This pair saw a nice breakdown. We're now looking – we're now long from just below 107. That shouldn't say losing. That should say looking. <laughs> looking for a move back towards the one cent level. Um, Dollar yen, still looking for this pair to track stocks lower in the weeks ahead, so our bias remains to sell rallies above this 95 handle that we've now pressed into. But we want to be real cautious with the S&P. It's still in this kind of blow-off mode, so we'll let it uh, we'll let it bring in more uh, well more people. I'll be nice today, um, and uh, and uh, go from there. Uh, Aussie US still sellers of those rallies as well. Um, continues to give us good trades, the the Kiwi as well for that matter, the Aussie and the Kiwi selling rallies um, when they materialize has been uh, good trades the last couple of weeks and I, I imagine will continue to be so. And then Dollar Canadian um, has been the one uh, pair that's really had no ability to maintain a support level yet. Um, that's not uncommon. This pair is... is uh, you know, I always refer to this Canadian... I trade the Canadian dollar, by the way, for almost 20 years. I traded it as a futures contract for a long, long time. Back when, you know, the Canadian dollar used to just follow the U.S. dollar and do whatever it did. That was the old relationship back in the day in the 80s, and early 90s. Anybody who's old school probably remembers that. Um, but uh, anyway, the... Uh, <clears throat> the Canadian now has been really just kind of manic depressive and Right now, it's kind of in a depressive phase, I guess. I like being long from down here near this 108 handle, but I'm not in a rush to get in it. I'm not in it right now. Well, I am in some accounts, but I'm not in my in my in my trading room in my signal service that I run. I'm not in it in there. So, publicly speaking, I'm not in it, but privately, I am. I'm short from basically current price. So we just got. 
a report that came out a few minutes ago too. It was the housing starts number. Um, and it came in, I talked about this in my uh, morning webinar in my trading room that I just wrapped up before I came in here to talk to you guys. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the report, the housing report, is what's called price to perfection. Uh, it had to come out stronger than the expectation, a lot stronger than the expectation, or the market's going to turn on it. Um, it did come out slightly stronger than the expectation. I think the number was supposed to be like 352, and you're saying they got 384. Is that right? Can somebody confirm that? Um, so that would have a, you know, that would again lead to this this concept of price to perfection. I would still argue that that's not enough to maintain it, because uh, it's the only thing that uh, that has held this uh, this market up this long is the fact that it's still pricing things to perfection. We now have a, a vacuum of, of data for the remainder of the day, really, so we don't have anything. The market's probably going to be a little bit drifty. I don't anticipate doing much trading today yet. I mean, a few things, but I'm not looking to uh, try and go nuts yet today because the risk is still abnormally high. We're still in the, you know, maybe two-thirds of the way through a, par a paradigm shift here. So these things don't turn on a dime, and they don't, and they're never easy. They're always violent. They're always hard to read. But risk, reward, and probability always guide us through it, at least me. So patience usually wins the day or the week or the month, whatever it takes. <clears throat> Do -do -do -do. I don't use anything to confirm. When I get a pattern, the first thing I look to do is unconfirm it, or kill it, is what I like to say. The first, th the first thing I do when I get a, 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 a pattern that shows up is I try to discount it. I try to kill it. I never look for confirmation, ever, ever, ever. Don't waste your time looking for confirmation. You want to know why? Don't waste your time looking for confirmation on the stuff. Right. You're always going to find it. Have you ever not found confirmation for a trade that you got into? And did they all work? Of course not. You're wasting your time. Don't look for confirmation. That's what the losers are doing. Don't waste your time. You will always find confirmation. Because you know why you'll always find it? Because you will search until you do. <laughs> and there's enough ambiguity, in, in, oh, I can't say that word, ambiguity <laughs> in technical analysis that you can always find some way to support your case. Always. So don't waste your time looking for confirmation. You try and kill the signal, and if you can't kill the signal, then you have a trade. It's that simple. Look for ways that look for reasons that you don't want to take the trade. Either there's too much risk, you're not comfortable with it, probability doesn't look good, you know, whatever. Something along those lines. But if you can't find a reason not to take it, then you have a reason to take it. But if you start finding reasons not to take it, then move on and wait for the next trade. Yeah, the structure of the pattern would be one way, absolutely. Um, if you're using harmonic pattern, I'm not just talking about these patterns. I'm talking about anything. This is not germane to patterns. This is germane to every single form of trading on this planet, fundamental, technical, or Uncle Joey's chicken soup. It doesn't matter. You never look for confirmation. That's what the 98% of people who lose are doing. It's a waste of time. You will always find confirmation. I mean, there's what the, what the heck's the point of that? That's like trying to look and see if the sky is blue. I mean... <laughs> So, no, don't waste your time. I enter based on probability and risk to reward. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Probability and risk to reward is the only thing that I do. Probability, risk to reward. Probability, risk to reward. The fact that I use harmonic patterns is frankly circumstantial. I do that because it complies with my fundamental belief about the universe. So, but it's neither here nor there. 
<clears throat> and Bill, you were asking about to get into the Swissy. Um, I do like it down here below 107 long. I'll tell you that much. I'm not telling you to get in it. You got to make your own decisions, but or not. But uh, but what I would say is, uh, and I would say this to all of you: you should all write this down, and you should put this of your trading area, whatever monitors. Maybe even tape it to your mouth. And I'm serious about this. I'm not really joking. Write this down, every single one of you. Better to be out of the market wishing you were in than in the market wishing you were out. 136.65, which is still too low for this pattern, but I'll leave it there for now. But uh, anyway, I'm trading it for the longer term. I'm not trading it for uh, short term. And that euro looks good too, finally. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now see, do you guys understand that when I say I'm short, it doesn't mean I think it's going down. Does everybody understand that? Just because I'm short this market doesn't mean I think it's going down. Does that make sense to everybody? Good. I'm happy to hear that. Then it looks like it makes sense for most of you. Just because I'm short doesn't mean I think it's going down. I don't think anything about these markets. I don't know where it's going to go, and neither do you, and neither does anybody else. And anybody who tells you they know where it's going to go is psychotic, and they're lying. Not to you, but to themselves. It's just not possible to know. So I have no idea where it's going to go. All I know is there's more risk to the downside than there is to the upside. That much I'm sure of. I'm 100% sure that there's more risk to the downside than to the upside. How can I say that with 100% assurity? Or, okay, I have to leave room for plausible deniability. So 99% certainty that there's more risk to the downside than there is to the upside. How do I know that? How can I say that? No, I don't use FIB levels to place trades. FIB levels are inherently used in the construction of harmonic patterns, but it's not the FIB levels in and of themselves that are necessarily what we're trading off of, or what I trade off of, or the people in my room trade off of with me, whatever. Now, I don't have a target in mind. I never use targets. I use trailing stops because, again, nobody knows where it's going to go. Anybody who tells you that they do is just crazy. And if you think you do, then you're the crazy one. The only people who can accurately foretell, the, predict the future live in rubber rooms. You do not need to predict the future to be a successful trader. In fact, the most successful traders in the world go the opposite way, spend absolutely no time trying to predict the future. Zero. Retroactively, or in hindsight, maybe is a better way to say that, it looks like they predicted the future accurately because they made money. But that was not how they made their money. I don't make money because I predict the future. And I'm having a great month, and I don't say that to brag. It's just a fact. But I didn't make any of the money that I'm up this month because I predicted the future accurately. I don't know what the future holds any more than Uncle Joey does. But I do know probability, and I do know risk to reward, and I know that they're not wrong. They're not right all the time, but they're right more often than they're wrong. And that's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything about anything else. I don't follow these reports. I don't listen to the news. I have no idea what's going on in the rest of the world. I don't want to know. It makes no difference because none of that matters. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Nada. Fundamental data is completely irrelevant. Technical data barely means anything. It's not about that. And I can prove it. And I know most of you disagree with me right now. At least 75% of you right now disagree with me. You're just not saying it. So say it. Tell me I'm wrong. <clears throat> if you... Pretend that you live on the moon for a minute. This is how I did it. This is how I taught myself this stuff. Pretend that you live on, a moon, on the moon for a minute, okay? And you're looking at the Earth just like, they, just like that, that beautiful floating Earth thing. Uh, that picture, you know, that the, that the uh, you know, when they faked the Apollo moon landing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, you know that great shot. Everybody knows the one I'm talking about. So if you picture yourself up there, um, and you're looking down at the earth as a whole. And uh, and you uh, and you see this thing for what it really is from the whole. Look at any data series of any 
nonlinear dynamic domain. Does everybody know what a nonlinear dynamic domain is? It's a real fancy group of words that has nothing more than it means this the data that we're analyzing is ever changing and it doesn't progress in a linear fashion. In other words, it's semi randomized. Okay? It doesn't mean it's random. You have to listen to every word. It's not random, it's semi randomized. There's a huge difference between the two. Um so the markets as most uh, natural systems have been proven to be basically a nonlinear dynamic domain, um, mathematically speaking. So don't look at this from the point of the markets. Just look at this from the standpoint of any data series that is the dynamic nonlinear domain. Any data. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be, uh, uh, for instance, it could be the way that... Uh, uh, water molecules circulate inside of a vacuum, uh, I mean, inside of a, uh, uh, a test tube if it's heated up, you know, Brownian motion, uh, for anybody who's science, into science. Um, you know, any, uh, any kind of data like that, if you look at that stuff, you fundamentally realize, okay, 70% of the time, any nonlinear dynamic data stays within what we, in chaos theory, usually call a bounded range. It is the studying of chaos and the conclusions that we have come to, I'm a chaologist so I can speak to this, are that there is no such thing as chaos. There is structure everywhere we look. And within that structure, we can find statistics. And within those statistics, we can ascertain probability. And within that probability, we can make money. It's really simple. I mean, it's mind-numbingly simple what I do. People so over try and complicate this. I don't give a damn what Trichet has to say. I don't care about any of that stuff. I mean, I watch that stuff because it's mildly amusing, but I could care less because it's not about that. That isn't what, what, that's what the losers are focused on, but that is not what the winners are focused on. We don't do it that way. We, we just focus on the numbers. It's just numbers. It's just probability and putting yourself consistently in a situation that offers you a favorable risk-reward ratio and favorable probability. It doesn't mean it's going to work every time. It just means you're consistently getting, putting yourself in those situations. And that's the secret, guys. I've said this before to consistency. Everybody's, you know, the holy grail of trading is to have consistent results, right? Everybody wants consistency, right? Is there anybody who doesn't want consistency? Why don't I ask it that way? <laughs> Is there anybody that says, hell no, I don't, I won't go, don't give me consistency? <laughs> right, I don't think so. Of course, everyone wants consistency. But the secret is this, consistency isn't something that you get. Consistency is something that you do. Uh, Phantom, I would agree with you. You're all, there's always going to be a, the potential for a black swan. Sometimes the, the fundamental news is going to trump the uh, the stuff and I don't disagree with that, but again over the long haul, it's just you know as long as you're managing your risk and you're not you know taking a huge loss on the event when that event when the black swan comes, it's okay it doesn't really matter it's part of the plan it's part of the program so and to be honest a lot of times I do go flat when news comes out so that I don't have to participate in the stupid or in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the so-called fun. So does that make sense, guys? Those of you that were asking me to explain probability, it's not really based on past history. It sort of is. I mean, yes, you do look at historical data, but it's historical data across every possible nonlinear dynamic domain that's ever existed on the face of this planet or outside of this planet, anywhere in the universe where you can find dynamic nonlinear data. You find these numbers. That's why we use them, because they're irrefutable. This isn't something that we made up. This is something that we discovered. There's a fundamental difference between a man-made invention and a discovery. A discovery was put here by something else, and I don't pretend to know what it was. But it's there, and we can't deny it, because mathematically speaking, it shows up more times than a person could reasonably attribute to this word called randomness. Okay? Am I, am I, am I clear? It's just that simple. You can choose not to like this or believe it, but trust me, uh, Go, go do your own homework, and you'll 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 find out that it's it's all there. I I tell people all the time I don't have opinions; I have evidence. 
Yeah, I mean, I, to go through the structure of the patterns is not something I can do in five minutes. I mean, I have I do a mentorship that I teach how to trade these patterns, how to trade with market harmonics. Actually, how to build your own trading system around market harmonics, and I use my and I show everybody my system and I use it as a template. Um, but anyway, inherent in that, and actually what we talked about last Tuesday when we had our session, or sorry Thursday when we had our last session, was uh, was structure, the actual structure of the patterns. How, what is good structure, what is bad structure, how to look at the substructure and the superstructure and know the difference between the two and which has more influence and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's all very basic, actually, of course, but, but, uh, but it takes time to go through. All right, what are the questions you guys have? I got a question for all of you. Is trading about winning or losing? Is trading about winning or is trading about losing? Successful trading, I mean, though. I'm specifically just talking about successful trading. This isn't necessarily the correct answer, but this is my answer. My answer is losing. Successful trading is about losing. The difference between me and, and, and you, and I don't say this as ego, but I say this as somebody who does have, and you can go look it up if you need to, uh, does have verifiable, consistent results over the years. Um, the, uh, the bottom line is, that uh, the one thing that I'm better at than everybody else who's losing is I'm better at losing. That's what they're not good at. That's why they lose, because they're not good at it. Losing is a skill, and I'm not trying to be funny. Losing is a skill, and if you're not get good at it, you're never going to make it. You have to be good at losing, because it is an essential part of trading. Trading is a combination of winning and losing. You can never have all winning trades, just like you can't breathe with just inhaling. You must inhale and exhale. So you have to, you have to uh, build losing into your plan. It's part of the equation. It's the most important part of the equation. So it has to be dealt with up front. That's why I said earlier you have to accept losing. Because it's the reality. <laughs> so it doesn't mean you want to lose or you focus on losing. It means that you accept the fact that it's going to happen along the way, and it's a necessary part. That's what separates all of you. No offense. I'm not trying to be a jerk. But if you're here, you're probably not killing it. It's unlikely. And that's why you're not killing it yet, frankly, because you're not yet good at losing. So if you want to figure out how to start making money in trading, first figure out how to lose well. And you have to then, and in doing so, you'll come to this uh, this central fact as well. There's such a thing as bad winning trades and good losing trades. And if you don't grasp that concept, you'll also struggle. Losing is not failure. Quitting is failure. Losing is one step closer to winning by having a consistent strategy that is built around a risk tolerance that you're comfortable with. But that's really it. That's really the secret to losing well. As long as you have a systematic way of taking losses that is comfortable for you and isn't abusive of your capital and allows you to survive the inevitable losing days, weeks, and months that will come, if you think you're going to have only losing, you know, only going to have one losing week every year, you're, you're 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 tripping, okay? That's called double dip, all right? You're going to have at least a losing month or two or three a, a year, probably a lot more than that. Even, and I'm just talking about the people who make money. I'm not talking about the people who lose at the end of the year. I'm talking about the, only the people who make money. They still have many losing months. In fact, many of them lost more than the majority of the months, like six or seven or eight months, but still made money because they know how to lose well. They know how to quit when they're down, which most losers don't do. They double up when they're down, and then they lose even more, faster. Am I wrong? You've all done that, unless you haven't been trading very long. Um, <clears throat> what else do you guys want to talk about? i got about 10 minutes left here. What else is on your mind? I can't believe that I'm not getting more 
comments from you people. I just said something that there's no way that any of you like to hear. Crickets? Come on. Step up. Let's go. I uh, use a 1.5 to 1 risk to reward ratio minimum. Uh, prefer it to be 2 to 1. Never higher than 5 to 1. I have an upside limit just like I have a downside minimum. Goals do not depend on account size. They depend, they're, they're, they're based on a percentage, and percentages are equal across all account sizes, whether you have $1 or $1 trillion in your account. It makes no difference. Yeah, I trade FX every day and futures every day, all day. Oh, my neck. Okay, so I've only got a few minutes left here, guys. I've got to wrap it up here. Um, but before I wrap it up, what other questions, comments, thoughts, jokes, complaints? What do you got? No. Futures, and I mean, again, I, I don't trade it the way most people do. To me, it's all the same. I don't care about if it's futures, forex, stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, whatever. It makes no difference. At the end of the day, the way I trade is a method. And whether or not it's futures or forex is six to one, half dozen of the other. doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't think, I mean, I've traded futures my whole life, and so I would, it's not a fair question to ask somebody like me. No, futures are not harder than FX. I would say they're easier because there's more information, and the information is, is finite or absolute because it comes from the exchanges. Um, and it's actually, they have to report it, and there's laws and whatever, whatever. It's not like Forex where it's just a total free-for-all. So from an information standpoint and being able to better assess probability, I think futures are easier, but really, at the end of the day, I don't care, if I'm being totally honest. Um, I'm hoping that we see the euro push to 43 canvas, because I would like to sell some more up there. But ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm very bearish, very, very bearish, the euro. Yes, I do manage accounts. Do I think oil will go higher? Um, oil is, like I already said in my newsletter and stuff, it's going to trade in a range between 50 and $75 for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know about a daily goal. Um, I would tell you that your goal should be less than 5% a month, regardless of your account size. If you shoot for more than that, you're exponentially increasing your probability of disaster. And you can't break that law because it's a law of nature. I go flat ahead of the news. I don't trade it. I usually take my positions out before the news. If I think it's going to be a big one that I don't want to be involved in, often I just don't even care and just ride through it. But but uh, I don't uh, I don't trade the news. Usually I, I'm, I'm flat through those those more like NFP. You know what NFP stands for? Everybody know what NFP stands for? Yeah, it's not non-farm payrolls. Everybody thinks that NFP stands for non-farm payrolls. That's not correct. You want to know what it actually stands for? Not freaking profitable. <laughs> Never freaking profitable. <laughs> That's what it stands for. More people lose more money in that one hour every month than in the entire rest of the month combined. Frankly, if you trade NFP, I don't know. God help you. <laughs> uh, NFP is a great day to go golfing. It's a great day. I hate golf, so it's not for me. But uh, usually uh, NFP is a Friday, and there's usually a Formula One race. So I always or, for, or Formula One practice. So I usually watch Formula One on NFP days, um, or I uh, go hiking, biking, or sur go down to the beach or uh, something. Anything but trade. Anything. I wouldn't trade with your money. That's just dumb. You're exponentially increasing your probability of disaster. So, you know, would you take your boat out if you knew there was a hurricane on the horizon? If you trade NFP, that's what you're doing. All right, I got to wrap it up, guys. So, um, thanks for all your questions. I really appreciate it. Be safe. If there's ever questions, uh, you can contact me through forextradersdaily.com. Um, I do have my signal service there and my mentorship for anybody who has an interest in actually learning this stuff and learning these methods. 
um, I do teach it. So anyway, be safe, and I guess I'll see all of uh, you premium members tomorrow. Um, and uh, the rest of you, I'll be back here on Wednesday.